So one of the types of problems that we'll encounter uh, and we'll be able to take advantage of these, these um, properties of logarithms would be something like this, where you're given a single uh, pretty messy log and you're told to expand it out uh, into multiple simpler logs. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, the first thing that I would start with uh, would be a log, and I notice that I have a quotient here. I know that I have a numerator and I have a denominator, so I would go ahead and split that up using my uh, quotient rule. So log of 5 times x plus 1 to the 4th minus log of the cube root of ab squared. All right, so now that I have two, of, two different logs, both of which have different properties, um, the first one, I'll expand using the product rule. So I'll have a log 5 plus log of x plus 1 to the 4th. And then before I get too crazy on this next one here, I, I do want to point out that this is the same thing as log of AB raised to the 2 thirds. Um, so anytime you see radicals, uh, they can be written as rational exponents, in which case now we can apply the power rule to bring the two-thirds down. Um, so uh, I'll go ahead and, and in addition to bringing the two-thirds down right here, I'm also going to go ahead and bring this four down right there. So, so far we're at log five plus four, log of x plus one minus two-thirds, uh, log of a times b. And I'm just about finished. Um, the last piece of the puzzle is to expand uh, the log ab. So log 5 plus our 4 log of x plus 1 minus 2 thirds log of a plus log of b. So me expanding uh, log ab using the product rule turns into this. Now we do want to be really careful. Uh, if you'll notice what I have underlined in blue, those are the exact same thing. Uh, so I need to be careful because the negative two-thirds is affecting this whole thing. So in my next line, that negative two-thirds also has to be affecting the whole thing, which is now the two parts. So my last step is to distribute the negative two-thirds uh, through there, and then I should have it expanded out in its simplest form. So there's our negative two-thirds log A minus two-thirds log B. So that beginning mess that we started with up here, that now can be expanded out uh, into multiple simpler logs, as you see. So the next type of problem that we see, um, we have it's given to us in the expanded form, uh, and we want to write this as a one single log or condense it down into one single log. Um, now, we're going to work pretty much backwards from how we did the last problem, but there is something here that I, I want you to be real careful about, and, and um, I choose to teach it this way, um, not because it's the only way. Uh, it, it's probably the most unconventional way, but I found that it really works well for students uh, to avoid a common mistake. So um, to get started, I, I want to start by moving up uh, the coefficients. So the one-half using the power rule I can take back up. Um, I can also take the three up. Um, but I'm actually going to go a little further. Uh, I'm going to group the negative 3 together, and I'm going to take it up as a negative. And I'm also going to group the negative 1 here together and take it up as a negative. So watch what happens when I do this. This will give me x to the 1 half plus natural log of y to the negative third plus natural log of z minus 4 uh, to the negative first. So by doing this now, we have only one operation holding these logs together. It's addition, which means that we really only need to use the product rule to condense it down. So we'll have a natural log of x to the one half, a y to the negative third, and a z minus four to the negative first. And at this point, uh, the properties of logs are finished. Now it's just some basic algebra. Uh, we have our natural log. The x to the 1 half has a positive exponent, so we'll keep it on top. The y to the third can come to the bottom now, along with the z minus 4. Um, 
And so the last step in all of this now is again to recognize that rational exponents are really radicals. So we'll have a square root of x over y cubed times z minus 4 uh, for our final answer.